Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary. It is Wednesday, June the 26th. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Today, I wanna to talk about Jake Vertanen, and I wanna talk about Nikolai Godolbin. Jake Vertanen is entering the second year of a two-year contract, paying him $1.25 million a year, and Nikolai Godobin is an RFA. The Canucks just extended him a qualifying offer, and he was making just under $900,000 last season, the third year of a three-year contract that he signed originally with the San Jose Sharks before getting traded here. And I bring this up, I bring these two guys up because I think they're connected in many ways. Um, they're both going to be fighting for spots on next year's team, at least spots higher up in the lineup. That's presuming that Godobin does stay with the team. I get Jake Vertanen is a right winger. I get Godobin is a left winger. They're both similar in age. Godobin is 23, Vertanen is 22. And they're connected from this whole qualifying offer thing because I, I looked up the qualifying offers for last year's uh, Canucks RFAs, and there are only three. It was Jake Vertanen, it was Troy Stetcher, and it was Sven Berchi. Sven Berchi was offered and signed a three-year, $10 million contract. Um, shortly after after July 1st, or maybe right on July 1st. Actually, now that I think about it, Sven Berchi was on July 1st. He signed his $10 million contract on, on that day. Troy Stetcher actually uh, filed for salary arbitration, the only one of the three guys who did. Never got there because then the Canucks signed him to um, a, a two- or three-year deal uh, worth $2.3, $2.4 million a year. So I think it's actually, now that I think about it, I think it was only a two-year deal, signed two, uh, $2.4, $2.5 million a year basically two and a half million. And then Jake Vertanen did not file for salary arbitration, but made a modest raise of $1.25 million for two years. And again, we're entering the second year of that two-year contract. So uh, a couple things here. You think about Nikolai Godobin and you think about what he's going to make. A, is he going to, it sounds like, not A, it sounds like he is going to come back to the Vancouver Canucks. That's the way he was talking at the end of last season. I think the Canucks want him back to see I think they're still trying to figure out what kind of player they have. I think eventually they, they got to make a decision. They're going to either commit to this guy or they're going to they're going to let him go. But this is you know after his three year contract, maybe they give him a one year or at most two year show me contract like they gave to Jake Vertanen. When you look at both players, uh, they don't play similar styles, but they had similar stat lines actually. I think Godobin finished seventh on the team in scoring and Vertanen eighth. Godobin had twenty seven points in sixty three games. So that's just under, you know, um, a point in every two games. So maybe it's a point four, point four, point four five points per game. So again, Godobin had 27 points in 63 games. Vertanen's right behind him with 25 points in 70 games. So Vertanen had two less points and in seven more games played. Vertanen's 25 points, you guys remember, it was 15 goals, 10 assists. And I think Godobin was like 9 and 18 um, for his 9 goals, 18 assists for 27 points. So Godobin played, uh, when you look at points per game, he was actually one of the Canucks' highest leading uh, scorers in only 63 games because he did get scratched for obviously a lot of games last season. Yet it sounds like the Canucks still want him back. It sounds like he still has a decent relationship with Travis Green. Obviously, Godobin and Vertanen played different styles. Vertanen, a lot of speed. Uh, you know, he has the potential to, to hurt some guys, to, to put his body on some guys, and to be a real wrecking ball in the offensive zone. Not the most skilled hands when it comes to deking or passing, but it got a hard, hard shot. Godobin's opposite in that um, he's not gonna hurt anyone. He's not gonna he's not gonna blow by anyone. He's he's nifty and he's quick, but he's not fast, if that makes a lot of sense. He doesn't have A to B speed, but he's got a really, really good hands. He's got a, a pretty good hockey IQ. I'm not saying that Vertanen doesn't, but I'd say uh, Godobin's hockey IQ is stronger than Vertanen's. And, um, and and he's a lot more creative in the offensive zone. It doesn't always lead to points or it doesn't always lead to goals, per se. And his, his shot probably isn't as heavy as Vertanen is, but he's probably a much better passer, Godobin is. And then both guys on defense have a little bit to work on. You know, I, I think we, we can count, we can remember a few times where either Vertanen or Godobin was, was a little slow on the back check or not hard enough on the back check. And obviously Travis Green wants guys that can play hard on the back check. So all to say... My question to you, Canucks fans, is um, let's say you had to pick one and you had to pick one only. Let's say the money was equal because it will be about equal. I think Godolin's going to get a uh, 1. Uh, 1 million, a 1.1 million, maybe up to a $1.2 million contract. And he can point to Vertanen's numbers maybe as a comparable. So let's say that the money is relatively equal. Let's say the term's equal. We know that they're about the same age. They're only one year apart. If you only could pick one, which player would you rather have on your team? Jake Vertanen or Nikolai Godobin? given all the things I said, given what you think about both players, and I'm not trying to start, start up controversy, I'm not trying to you know cause any trouble. I think it's a, it's a 
matter of fact, though, that they're likely going to be competing for a similar spot next season. And yes, I get that they play on opposite wings, but Travis Green likes guys who can play both wings. We'll move guys if necessary. But you can lock in guys like regular minute guys, obviously like Horvat, Pedersen, Besser, JT Miller, Pearson, Levo, presuming he signs. Then you got uh, Berchi, you have Sutter, you have Beagle, you have Gaudet, you have Mott. That's already 11 that I just named. And that's not including any like guys like Schaller, maybe. And, and um, so really, and then don't forget, Anton Roussel has got to come back from his injury too back in December. So you can see how the, the spots really fill up very quickly on the forward lines. So that's my question to you, Canucks fans. Given their similar contract situations, i.e. Godobin's going to make similar to Vertanen, that's my prediction. Given that Vertanen was an RFA last year, Godobin's an RFA this year. Given that they're similar ages, given that the Canucks need them to do similar things, provide an offensive spark, provide a big goal once in a while, yet be very uh, responsible defensively. All those things, bottom line, question to you, which player would you rather have if you could only pick one? Nikolai Godobin or Jake Vertanen? Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Enjoy the day. God bless and go Canucks go.